Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's greet uh, each other. Uh, let's change today what is rooting us. Let's change today what is us. Today is our second week. Uh, it finishes our second week uh, about these uh, 21 days uh, concentrated training, right? Uh, this is the, this was the week uh, to be concentrated on what? God's kingdom, right? That's why today's title is The 21 Mysteries of Life for Healing and Only God's Kingdom. Um, if we are able to receive strength uh, and see God's glory every day, uh, our life will become different, right? Also, I will be able to overcome uh, everything and all situations of any problem that I can face. Uh, so our brother also, Tondere, was praying, right? If we are able to receive that kind of strength today after the service, uh, everything will be uh, possible for us. I really pray today that we can receive the strength that we need uh, for the week today through the service. Uh, really pray uh, today to receive the strength that I need uh, for my studies, the strength that I need uh, for keep going work, for keep uh, studying or going to uh, school. Uh, I pray for all of you to receive uh, also grace. Uh, we are talking about this uh, 21. About these uh, 21 things, right? Uh, even today, the pastor uh, was telling to us why uh, the Mexico was uh, destroyed, right? Uh, he was talking about the last uh, days. Uh, what is happening in the last days? Destruction will keep coming. It's the end of the age, right? And why this is coming? Why Babylon or why uh, Assyria or other uh, cities uh, like Damascus also was destroyed? The reason why it was because it wasn't anyone to uh, anyone asserting the gospel. So, in other words, we can see that the gospel is. Uh, the only answer who block also the disasters. What is the fundamental or the standard about these 21 things? It's focus on the gospel. If I concentrate just a little bit uh, during 20 days, even during one day, even during one minute during the day, in the gospel, my life will start to become different. In which way it will be different? This kind of destruction will stop in my life. There is three weeks. Today we are talking about this uh, week. It's about the God's kingdom. In conclusion, is to be truth in this. Uh, let's review a little bit the week. Uh, I don't know how much you was able to enjoy uh, during this week. Uh, as I know, as I was talking with uh, some of you, some of you even lose a little bit of strength. Uh, first week, we was able to concentrate a little bit, day by day. But this week, uh, a few days and nothing and a few days, right? Some of you, I don't know. Uh, um, what I want to say, don't lose strength and keep on doing. Because uh, if you are keep trying, uh, the grace of God will come also upon us. Doesn't matter if you can do it well or not. Just a little bit that you can be concentrated, your life will start to change. What is the conclusion? If you are concentrated a little bit in uh, the gospel, you will become awake spiritually. You will start to see things that people are not seeing. As the pastor was uh, sharing today with us, uh, if I have to fight against uh, Goliath, right? I cannot be shaking, probably. He's so big, so strong, bigger than me, stronger than me. Uh, probably I'm gonna be really sick. But David has assurance, right? It was completely different. If we are able to be focused a little bit in the gospel, the assurance that this gospel will give to us, it will be make us able to overcome all situations or problems. On Monday, we was focused a little bit on the, on the Mount of Olives. That was uh, Monday, the first day. 
We can read even today, during 40 days, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives with who? The disciples. Who are the disciples? Can I say I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ? Amen? Can you believe that? Yes. Uh, if you can believe that, if, if you are sure of that, it's because you have a conclusion here in only Christ. That's why you can say I'm a disciple of Christ, because I will follow only Christ. Uh, if you told this to a non-believer, they don't have a reason to follow Christ. They don't have or other uh, believers of other religions, Muslim people or other people. If you told them about this, uh, they don't have a reason to believe in Jesus Christ. They don't have a reason to follow him. Of course, it's because they, did, they couldn't understand what is the fundamental problem of the human being. But uh, what I want to say is, you guys have this conclusion. This conclusion that was given to us in the first week. So this week is the month of Olives. What does it mean? During 40 days, Jesus took the disciples and was preaching to them continually about the kingdom of God. Which kind of a blessings? There's a big blessing inside of this. Um, this means, don't be focused in other things. Just be focused in this continually. This is the reason why God, or Jesus, uh, took them to the Mount of Olives. Where, what? They could maybe do it in their house, or they could do it just once per week, as we are gathering here. But Jesus brought them to the Mount of Olives during 40 days. What it means is, what it means, uh, be concentrated. During 40 days, he was continually preaching about the kingdom of God. Where in other words, he was talking to the disciples, don't do other things. Why they bring it to the mountain? Because in the mountain there is nothing, right? If they do in the in town down, after the message, they will maybe go to eat something and walk around and meet other people. They start to think about many things. I have to do, I have to go and do this and this. But why the mountain? And why 40 days? To keep focus only in this. It means forget about other things. Uh, forget about what is your family line. Forget about what is your problems or any situation that you are living. Just God's kingdom. Uh, you are blessed uh, because uh, you understand this and you are here today. That's all what you must uh, know. Christ finished everything in the cross. And to overcome that, to overcome all things, he gave, he gave us authority. Right? Even uh, our sister Emily today was talking about that during the praise. God gives us authority to overcome all things. This authority is the authority to come from the cross. And also, he gave us power to do word evangelization. To do word evangelization, he gave us power. So the only thing that we must do is just use it. Use this power, this, use this authority that is in the name of Jesus. We can check this in Mark 3.15. And we can check this in Acts 1.8. Next week we are starting also from Monday, right? It's the third week, the last week. And we are going to be concentrating more in this. It's Acts 1.8. It's the third week. It's the day of Pentecost. The day where uh, the words of the Holy Spirit uh, arise in your life. This is our calling. If I put uh, my goal in front of uh, me and pray, you must know that that's not, not prayer. If I put uh, my desire, if I put uh, what I need, if I put the physical things that I want before God and pray, you must know that that's not prayer. What is pray? Pray is seek God's kingdom. Pray is seek God's desire. That's our prayer. We must follow God's standard. We must follow God's will. That's God's prayer for us. Uh, that was on Tuesday. I was meditating on this. Acts 9 or 15. Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry uh, my name before the Gentiles. I was meditating on this. 
And I was receiving my calling from God uh, to this. Uh, God called me to find those who are ready to, for this salvation, to find those who are ready to go also with me for water and decision. That's my calling. God is commanding me, is calling me and saying to me, go, because this is instrument, to, uh, this is my chosen instrument to carry my name to the Gentiles. Uh, what it means, I have to conclusion. God really called me, I can check that through the Bible. He really called me to bring his name to the Gentiles, to the non-believers. What is the second thing that I can confirm? God called me also to find those who are instrument for him. For me, the best glory that I can uh, receive myself is being used uh, by God. It's the only desire that I have. So I was inside of this praying on Tuesday, we was having a church evangelization camp. It used to be uh, once or twice uh, per month. And we were having a uh, evangelization camp. So I was going inside of this prayer. Today, I'm going to meet someone that God prepared. Today, I'm the instrument that God will use. Today, I'm going to meet uh, another instrument for uh, share, uh, to carry uh, the name of Jesus to the Gentiles. I was going with that kind of prayer. So when I went to the field, something started to happen. Why? When we are praying and holding to the word, God fulfilled that kind of word. So I just went there and I met uh, one, uh, one man. I started to share the gospel, but he started to receive really well the gospel. He started to open his eyes. He said, actually my aunt is Christian, but and he, she's telling me sometimes about uh, Jesus, but I'm not sure about this. Told me a little bit more. He wants to listen. So I just started to share the gospel. I just start to share my life uh, story. Have you heard about my life history? History? Maybe not. Uh, some of you are also at the uh, I couldn't understand why I have to go to church. I couldn't understand why I have to believe in Jesus Christ. So I told him, I'm not here to tell you to come to church. I'm not interested in that. I'm here to tell you, when you believe in Jesus Christ, something changes. When you believe in Jesus Christ, he solved your fundamental problem. What is most important, what it changed in me when I believe in Jesus Christ? You must understand this. So I start to say the gospel to him. What is human being fundamental problem? Why God sent Jesus Christ? Why Jesus is the answer for my problems? And what it changed in me after believing in Jesus Christ? I came here to tell you this. So he started to open his eyes more and start to listen. Uh, conclusion, he accepted Jesus Christ. He said, but I have to do something uh, from now on. I have to do something just to start to enjoy these uh, blessings. No, in Romans 10, 9 to 10, he said, if you just believe and confess with your mouth, you become a child of God. It's the only thing that you must do. The words of salvation arise in that moment. You don't need to go to church to receive salvation. You don't need to do other things. What I want to tell you today, if you believe in Jesus Christ, from that moment you become child of God. If you believe in Jesus Christ, from that moment the spiritual problem becomes solved in, your, in, in, in you. Uh, he was receiving uh, the gospel really well and doing a certain prayer really well. After that, even I asked him, what is Jesus now? He's in my, in my heart. He said, of course. What I want to say, if I have this conclusion and this calling, why I start to see what is necessary? People love Jesus, but people doesn't know this, who is Jesus really well. What is necessary? If I have this kind of calling, I see what is necessary. Oh, I must share this. I was living my life, even since I was young, inside of church. What I realized, 
I was growing inside of church, but many people, even in church, they don't know really well why Jesus came to this earth. We say he's the salvation, but I don't know from what he saved me. It's necessary things. Necessary things that I have to start to share. What God needs the most. People who uh, bring people uh, to be in are used for him to fulfill his work. This is what God needs. So I really pray and bless all of you to become the people that God need. We must become the department that God really need. There's many foreigners out there, more and more foreigners are keep coming to Korea. We must become the evangelization disciples that God need to fulfill his work. Why foreigners are coming here to Korea? To study? Some of them, they will just study and go, but many of them, they are coming to receive the gospel. I have that kind of faith. So with this kind of conclusion, with my whole heart, is continually doing this. With my whole heart, only doing uh, this one thing. Why 40 days training? Why 21 days training? To put in my life only the gospel. This is why the conclusion is imprinted, Ruth, and next week is going to be our nature. To put my life only inside of the gospel. What it means, just go uh, around doing evangelism and don't study, don't work, doesn't mean that. It means, even I'm studying, even I'm working, even I'm meeting my friends, even I'm going uh, to travel, even doing these kind of things, I'm doing not just for myself, but for the gospel. So inside of my business, inside of my studies, I can seek God, uh, plans for my life. That's the answer of uniqueness. Um, there is people, if we are able to see you know, the earth, there is people who are really blessed, and there is people who are uh, not really uh, blessed. What is this standard? Most of the people who are not blessed by God, they are really worldly. Uh, yesterday I get also a phone call from overseas. Uh, it was a call from a missionary, a missionary from other country. And he was talking to me about how many problems, and because I'm here in Korea, maybe I can talk with someone and asking me about these kind of questions. Uh, why uh, these problems are coming to us? I told him just one thing. Don't be focused on the problem. Why? Most of the problems, if we are looking, is really worldly. It's because it's my church. That's the problem. It's because it's my members. That's the problem. It is because it's my money or because it's my land. How big is our land? That's our limitation. That's nothing for God. So most of our pro problems are really worldly. No, but they are my members. You are just looking for a number or just care about their souls. Where is my heart? If there is a place where you can do the work of faith better than here, it would be better to you to go to that place. I don't have any problem uh, with that. The only thing that I'm looking for, if you are able to write the same flow and receive answers for your life, then it's enough, right? Who are those who are blessed? We can read in Psalms 1 from 1 to 6. Those who meditate in the world, day and night, they say they are prosper people. Even you are busy, even you have to study, even you have to prepare many things, I really bless all of you and congratulations you, because you stopped all that things and came here to worship. That means you are blessed and you will prosper. Like a tree uh, planted in the streams of water. Uh, 
then you will be able to see what is 25 hours. One day, it only has 24 hours. What is 25 hours? That's the meaning. It goes over the human being. We only have 24 hours, but work 25 hours. Can you imagine that? It's something that go over us. In other words, oh. it's God's power developed in our lives. That's 24 four hours. In this moment, uh, God's power is revealed to us. It is uh, something completely that overcome our nature, that overcome our power, our overcome our abilities. Finally, today, today is the day to change what is truth in us, that this gospel become everything. Fruits uh, will uh, be born from uh, what is root in you. So root down the gospel in your, in your life. Why? Because this is the answer, the only answer. So if you are rooting your life in the gospel, it means uh, the fruits that you will uh, receive later is a fruit that comes out from the gospel. As the pastor was talking even today oh, in the message, um, we must become the kind of uh, people who have faith. We must become the kind of uh, parents, right? Who has faith. Oh, I'm not married, not yet. I'm not even a father, right? Because I'm not married. Uh, but I'm praying also, of course, for my future wife. Which kind of people I can admit? Most of the people think, no, someone who is kind with me or it fixed to me, it's something even more than that, right? Pastor was talking about that. It's more than my wife. It's going to be also the mother of my, my kids, right? The future remnants who must also uh, keep uh, sharing the gospel to the next and next generation. So it's something more deep than this. So what is truth in this? That really this gospel becomes everything. For me, I don't need to be worried for other things. I don't need to do even other things. The, my only focus is to make this mine. To make this gospel mine. Because I saw it. I saw how the people change. I saw how the people can receive answers to their life through the gospel. Then, that's it, right? I don't need to think. So if I can make this gospel my gospel, I'm sure that many people through me can be blessed. So I don't need to be worried about other things. Money or work, studies. Of course, God will make me prosper. Because I'm blessed. God is blessing me. It's over. That kind of blessing is over even my life. It's 25. Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your grace. Really, uh, we have been imprinted. We have a root in other things that is not the gospel. Work with your Holy Spirit in our lives. And really plant and root or uh, this true gospel in our lives. That through us, we can become a witness of uh, uh, that you are alive and you are also with us. Strengthen us and keep uh, doing, keep uh, giving us the grace that we need to be concentrated in the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.